Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Grani, Grani, Grania McKenna Daniels, and I apologize for butchering your name. Will you share <laughs> our, your name again for our audience? Uh, it's Grania McKenna Daniels. <laughs> Grania McKenna Daniels. Grania McKenna Daniels is a homeopath and healer who uses Reiki and crystals in her healing work. You can find out more about Grania McKenna Daniels and her wonderful work at her website, thehomeopathandhealer.co.uk. <laughs> Hopefully I got most of that right. So Grania McKenna Daniels, welcome to the Natural Healing Show. Thanks a million for having me here. I'm very well, I'm very grateful. Thank you. So I am really super excited. So we are going to be talking about crystals. So Grania McKenna Daniels, what is crystal healing? Uh, so crystal healing is a holistic form of healing um, and it works with the subtle energy fields around the body. Um, it um, deals with energy blockages and when the chakras are blocked, it leads to disease in the body. So it can manifest in physical or mental and emotional or spir spiritual issues. Um, and by placing kind of the correct crystal on the chakra, you help to release that energy. Um, it kind of focuses and directs the energy. So you can use points um, and various shapes of the crystal to either um, <clears throat> magnify the energy going in or help bring it out. Um, so we all have an electromagnetic field around our body. And basically you want to find the best crystal that resonates with it. Um, yeah, it's kind of like been used for many, many uh, thousands of years. So the ancient Egyptians used it. Um, you know, Tutankhamun had uh, lapis lazuli um, on his head, uh, dressed in in the tombs, and there's kind of references on the on the pyramids, etc. So, so yeah, it's been around for thousands of years, and I just absolutely love doing it. <laughs> so I'm so excited to uh, share this topic with Grania McKenna Daniels, because uh, full confession. My hobby for many years was actually beading and I would make necklaces and earrings for my clients. So let's say I knew that they had a heart issue. Well, I would make them a jewelry for their issue and give it to them yeah. as a gift. And um, also at one point I tried to start a business in healing crystals, didn't work out for various reasons. But when I did that, I spent lots of time putting together long lists of this crystal is good for that chakra and this crystal is good to, for this issue. And um, so for my audience, I have to share some of my favorite crystals. I'm wearing a Moldavite ring and Moldavite mm -hmm. accelerates your spiritual growth. During the pandemic, I started wearing angel aura cords. An angel aura quartz helps to amplify your light because as we recall, that was a very dark time and only light can drive out darkness. So I've continued to wear angel aura quartz. And my favorite crystal for many years has been a Herkimer diamond. So I just mm -hmm. share that and for everyone, it's this beautiful piece of uh, a clear crystal. So Grena McKenna Daniels, as you know, many of us in natural healing naturally gravitate towards crystals. And most of the real for real healers that I know, they have crystals that are very special for them. How did you personally get into crystals? So, yeah, I think I started from a young age. Um, I know my brother used to tease me for having a box of stones and crystals under my bed. 
Um, I remember being in Kerry once and finding this amazing geode. Um, I think it was white quartz and stuff, and it was just beautiful. And I kind of think, you know, um, I just kind of started like a magpie. So I guess you got to start collecting them and then they started attracting, you know, the energy and then it just gets bigger and bigger. And I think when I had enough crystals to open a shop, I kind of thought, well, I'll have to go on the healing route. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just wonderful, really, and I think a lot of people resonate with them is because it's so simple and it's so beautiful and natural, really. Um, you know, and it's inexpensive as well. I mean, anybody can pick up a crystal, and because it's just so personal to them and they get drawn to it, I think that's that's the power of it, really. For sure, and I remember how I got into crystals when I first went to study with my mentor in healing, and I did her whole internship for the first time. I've now done it. I think five or six times <laughs> I've studied a lot of healing. And I remember after my first internship, she told me, she said, you need to wear a Ruby when you're working. And I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe I have to spend all this money. You know, <laughs> to, you know, but then I got a Ruby and I absolutely started feeling better when I did my work. Mm. Cause at the time I was in adrenal burnout and Ruby really strengthens that first chakra and strengthens your personal fire. And as you can see, I don't really have trouble with fire at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was drawn to fluoride recently because I think I've got ADHD. So kind of like sitting down and preparing for this. I'm just like, I need some grounding here. So, you know, and they pop into your lives. I mean, I was looking for it and I found it in the book. And then someone, my friend, texts me on Sunday to say, literally up the road, there's a crystal um, fair. And I kind of went up and got it. So I think you're drawn to or the crystal appears that you need at the time. And you kind of work with your intuition that way. Yes, for sure. And I believe that fluoride that you have there helps to integrate the right and left hemispheres of your brain. Yeah, and balancing the masculine and the feminine. So hopefully it's doing a good job. <laughs> you're doing an awesome job. Now, can you explain for our audience how does crystal healing actually work? Because a lot of a lot of people who have not used crystals before would be like, what? You know, and I and I remember before I got into it, I was like, I'm never going to be one of those crazy crystal people. Now I've got crystals everywhere. <laughs> right. Well, I think I think fundamentally and fundamentally we're all energy. And I think, you know, the electromagnetic field we have around a body and the subtle energies of the chakras um i think they're all emitting energy so likewise with crystal with a crystalline structure and lattices um that emits an energy so i think it's kind of you know matching that en energy and the resonance um you know sometimes it is hard to explain things that you know they say is not proven but i think the fact it helps so many people and there's you know the amount of patients i see and and the kind of there's marked improvements every time i see them then you know, I think the proof is in the effect, really. Yes. And, you know, as you study crystal healing, you and I have studied crystal healing for decades, and there are specific stones that balance the chakras, that help you to resolve specific issues, that activate different acupuncture meridians or levels of the energy field, right? So, again... <laughs> it can really, really help. So again, the one that I'm wearing helps to amplify my light because that is what people need from me. So what is involved is different healers use heal crystals differently. For me, I've got crystals all over my healing room. So they're there. They help to set the vibration in the space. So, Grana McKenna Daniels, how do you use crystals in your healing sessions? Yeah, so kind of um, I get the person to lie down on the treatment couch and then I'll get them both hands to hold um, the clear quartz crystal. So I go through and as I go through, you know, that's the master healer and that kind of helps uh, amplify the healing in, in process. Then I'll have black obsidian at their feet to help them ground. So sometimes a lot of people are coming in, they're a bit stressed and anxious and not knowing what to expect. So that kind of covers, you know, the connection with the, the higher realms and also the grounding energy. Um, and then I get intuitively drawn. So, you know, some people use dowsers with the pendulums. Um, I kind of, you know, are drawn. I'll have my crystals laid out in a circular format and then I'll just be guided to it. 
um, and then I'll place it on the different chakras. Um, so, you know, depending on how much energy the individual chakra needs, I can use a, a star crystal, uh, star quartz format. So it has the four crystals either directing inwards or outwards. Um, and then sometimes they'll need an extra point on their body. So the eighth or ninth area of healing. And then I'll link that with an amethyst trail. So yeah, you're one of the purple ones. Uh, amethyst trail to the corresponding chakra. Uh, and then I'll activate it with my master healer. Um, can you show these? Yay. I've got a lovely, it's a beautiful clear quartz crystal, but it's got the kind of pink going through it. So mm. she definitely picked me. So I was very lucky. Um, and then I just, yeah, I allow the person to kind of, um, to lie there and let the crystal start working. So, you know, some people will have physical experiences or reactions um, to the crystals and some will kind of feel it on a more energetically, uh, energetic level, but, um, but yeah, it's just, it's just lovely. So that's how I do it. <laughs> yes. So great explanation. So let's explain this from a scientific perspective for our audience. So one of the things that we know <clears throat> is that it's a law of physics that anytime there's a vertical electrical field, there's a vertical electrical current, there's a magnetic field perpendicular to that. Now, new agey people refer that to that as your aura or your energy field, right? And then within the energy field, then you have energy centers that are referred to as chakras and you have seven major chakras and a lot of minor chakras. So the different chakras are actually different vibrations. So um, the, the upper chakras, for example, are higher vibrations than the lower vi chakras and crystals act, they balance and heal through resonance. So just like two clocks who are in the room, who are in the room with each other over time will start um, ticking with each other. So the crystals, when you when we use crystals in healing work, then you as an individual come into energetic resonance with a crystal. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Grania McKenna Daniel, Daniels, when you first get a new crystal. Do you clear the energy in it? And if so, how do you do that? Yeah, definitely. So kind of when you're picking up a, a new crystal, it will have other people's energies, you know, negative and positive energies. Um, so I, because I use Reiki, I put the crystal um, symbol on it. But it's not because even now my daughters, when they get crystals, they hold them in their hands and they send the love and the healing to them. Um, but there are various methods. So you can place them in the moonlight. So the full moon it's just wonderful for kind of re-energizing your crystals. You can place in, them in the sunlight, but you just need to be careful. So for example, again, like the amethyst, it's a beautiful purple, deep purple color, but that will discolor over time. So you just need to be mindful not to leave them in the sun for too long. Um, you can also place them under running water. So some people are gonna say, you know, spring water, but tap water is fine, but you need to be careful with selenite. So the selenite there is just kind of very sensitive and will dissolve in water. So don't be putting that in the water. Um, and then smudging. Um, I use Palo Santo wood because um, I just can't stand the smell of sage, but um, that's another method as well. Or sound. I'm good uh, with a Reiki drum. I kind of like bringing that out and just yes. taking away. <laughs> yes. And I, I, I love everything you said. Another thing that I have done, like if I used a crystal in healing, is I can bury it in my garden, right? I, oh, wow, I, have, to I, remember, I have to remember where I bury it. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's definitely times when I've like buried crystals in my garden and it's like, wait a minute, I had to go get it, dig it out of the garden. So you can bury it in the earth to, to uh, clear the energy. And another method of clearing a crystal so let's say you just bought, you you were attracted to a crystal in the shop, but other people would have touched it or played with it. So you can actually say a prayer over a crystal. <clears throat> so Lovely. I'm going to hold my Herkimer right now. And you can definitely use a pendulum. I don't have a pendulum right now to demonstrate this, but if you use a pendulum, 
the pendulum will show you when the, you've cleared the energy. So you can, you can either use a pendulum or just hold the crystal in your hand and then just say a prayer. Now, I grew up in the Christian tradition, so I use God. You can also use universal source, whatever feels best for you. I respect all religious traditions. So I'm going to say the prayer now to cl clear this crystal as if I would. Um, although this crystal, as you can feel it, if you can read the energy, the, the energy is pretty powerful in this crystal. But so Heavenly Father, I call on the forces of nature to converge, to balance all detrimental energies in this crystal and increase all beneficial energies in this crystal for the benefit of all living beings. And I ask that this be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Amen. So you, so if you buy a crystal from a store, you definitely want to clear the energy in it because again, other people could have owned it or used it. And then the other thing that you can do is you can program crystals for specific purposes. So Grant, Grania McKenna Daniels, how do you program crystals? Yeah, so because I think some people kind of say crystals don't work with it, work with them or for them, and I think sometimes you have to ask them. So you definitely have to put your energy and programming in there. So, you know, the best way I find it is you know to activate your um, palm chakra. So you kind of want to rub your hands together and kind of you can start feeling the energy field between that, and then you want to kind of take your crystal and kind of put it there and hold it. And you really want to connect with it. So you just want to kind of look at all of the kind of beautiful differences in it. Um, you know, some people kind of say if they're different sort of um, spiritual levels, some people can pick up a different smell from different crystals or sometimes the sound. Um, but you really want to kind of connect it to your heart and then just kind of communicate with it however you receive transmission. So, you know, I connected with a, a carnelian crystal the other day and it very much you know, it affected my throat chakra and it was all about finding my voice and communication. So I think different crystals will have different meanings for individuals, but it's definitely, yeah, connecting to it. And then likewise, if you want to program it. So I, with my master healer that I used in the healing sessions, I program that for the specific um, purpose of healing. So that's programmed now. It's set with my energy and my intention. So you can reprogram them, but I think once you kind of have that connection, it's it's worth kind of building it and nurturing it that way. But but yeah, it's just a lovely kind of it's like um, befriending someone and just kind of nurturing that relationship, really. Excellent information. And for our audience, I'll demonstrate. So I showed how you can clear crystals through prayer. Right. And going back to that prayer that I said, if you'll notice and I'm going to repeat the prayer heavenly father you call on a high you know god higher spirit universal source i call on the forces of nature to converge to balance all detrimental energies now notice that you don't word, use the word negative because there's yin and there's yang and yin is not bad so you want to balance the detrimental energies and increase all beneficial energies for the benefit of all living beings. And I ask that this be done in the name of Jesus Christ. May the will be done. Amen. Now, if I want to program a crystal, so here's my Herkimer. And so, so let's say you want to use this crystal for healing, right? And I've definitely used this crystal in major healings, both for myself and for others. So the first thing you want to do if you program a crystal is you want to clear the energy in it first it's like so starting with a clean slate and then i'm going to program this crystal with prayer so heavenly father thank you so much for blessing me with this beautiful herkimer diamond i ask that this herkimer diamond be infused with healing energies at the highest vibration that is beneficial to me and to everyone that i work with i ask that this Crystal, please align me and all of my clients to the highest vibrations of which they are capable. I ask that this be done gently and easily for the highest good of all. And I ask that this be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you program a crystal, you basically say a prayer and ask for it to hold and share 
the healing benefits mm -hmm. uh, that you need. So Grania McKenna Dan Daniels, do you have anything to add to that information about programming crystals? Um, you know, I agree with the calling the higher, um, you know, God consciousness or cross consciousness as well, because I think, you know, sometimes there can be negative energies around the place. So I think you definitely want to aim and make sure it's on the higher level and for the highest good of all people. So, yeah, I think that's a good thing about it. OK, and with that, let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors. You're listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. And we're listening to Grania McKenna Daniels, homeopath and healer, about how she uses crystals in her wonderful work. So Grania McKenna Daniels, as you know, many people who do energy healing use crystal wands in their work. And myself, I've got several of them, different um, materials, quartz ones. I have another one that's aventurine, which is really great for healing the heart. And what they look like is they look like a little laser, right? So what are crystal wands and how do people use crystal wands in healing work? Yeah, I guess, um, so it's just a, another way of kind of amplifying or directing the energy in the direction that you want to go with. So I think everybody that's watched Harry Potter has seen every wizard with a wand and stuff like that. So if my children know how to make wands, it's, it's lovely. Um, but yeah, I think it's about focusing the energy and your intention on a particular area. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I got a selenite wand. So what I use that for is clearing the space and kind of, you know, shedding away negative energies from around the bodies and about around the aura. Um, so it's just kind of an extension of your hand and I guess your palm chakras as well. So, but the point, I mean, that's why they say you should never point it at someone, but it's just the point will direct the energy. So, so just magnification really. But I don't have, yeah, above that, I don't have a magical one that I use. <laughs> now, um, so you've used crystals for many years in your work. Can you give some examples of crystals that people can use on themselves? Yeah, so I uh, kind of alluded to amethyst earlier, but amethyst is a wonderful tranquil kind of uh, lovely soothing energy. So it kind of helps reduce, you know, stress and anxiety. Um, it absorbs negative energy around the house. It's good for kind of building relationships. So kind of if you have it in your workspace and maybe you just need that boost of confidence, it's a good one for that. Um, then citrine, um, that's kind of a wonderful one. So it's like a feel good crystal. So it's kind of, you know, got sun energy in there. It's revitalizing. Um, it's a source of vitamin D in the, in the winter months. Um, you know, they can use it in their plants to help, like I say, indoor plants grow in the winter. Um, and it's also kind of a source of abundance. So some people kind of say, oh, well, that's, you know, for cash, but abundance of kind of happiness, or kind of, ha yeah, happiness and joy in their lives. So, and some people, if you kind of go from your front door to the far left hand corner, you know, I think eventually it's your money center. So you can put that there to kind of prosper in things. Um, smoky quartz, so I don't think you can quite see the smokiness to it, but, this is wonderful. I got it from my daughter, say, when she was having bad dreams. So we stick it under the pillow. That kind of helps. Um, it kind of deflects negative energy. So, you know, if she was stressed at school, it would kind of dissipate that energy. Um, it's good for geopathic stress. So we've got loads in our house because we have kind of a well that goes just under the girl's bedroom. So, again, it's just, you know, helping with both things. Um Rose quartz and I've, it's a lovely heart shape rose quartz and rose quartz is all about um you know helping you to love yourself and kind of appreciate yourself but it's kind of a nurturing stone 
kind of deals with heartbreak um you know carrying crystals on you so obviously you've got lovely jewelry but you know physical contact with either holding it in your hands or you know if you're a woman you can stick it down your bra it's it's nice to have it on skin contact really um but yeah it helps stabilizing the energy kind of a soothing stone um uh yeah, and the black tourmaline so again so that's good for emf uh so from phones and laptops etc you know it's good to have on your work desk to kind of absorb that um and again in your home you can put a grid so on the four corners of your property and kind of put yourself in a grid of kind of uh, transmuting negative energy from coming in um yeah and just yeah i think that's a good healing crystal um and yeah we say kind of just a general uh clear quartz crystal so that's a master healer good for everything basically um and it carries like the seven colors of the rainbow so um yeah covers um the seven chakras as well so great information now um grania mckenna Dan daniels so you mentioned several crystals and you talked about using them both on our person and in our home environment so, for example, in my office where I'm recording this interview, I have um, what's called an amethyst cathedral. And an amethyst cathedral, it's not a place, but it's a huge piece of amethyst. And um, amethyst, amethyst cathedrals help to clear and detoxify the energy in a space. What's really funny is my little puppy knocked over the cathedral and broke it in several pieces <laughs> but oh. it's still <laughs> it still works right so how can people go about choosing the right crystals for them yeah so i think it's kind of um tuning into your intuition i think is sometimes you know people kind of expect being big signposts but i think sometimes you're just drawn to it so sometimes you know, people kind of either gift you a crystal or it kind of appears. I've had a crystal that literally appeared on my doorstep before and it was exactly the one I needed. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's lovely stores that you can go into, you know, lovely crystal shops or even online. But I think it's about matching your um, energy, really. So I think, like I said I'm, earlier, it's like sometimes you feel like you're magpie because you're just drawn to the beautiful energy. But sometimes it's like your body telling you, it's like, right, I need this crystal now. And, um, yeah, it's just trusting and tuning into that intuition really now i love the examples that you're showing us because lots of people think the crystals have to be big and if you go into crystal shops you can buy huge crystals mm -hmm. that cost tens of thousands of dollars and you can definitely spend that amount of money but you don't have to and the examples that grania mckenna Dan daniels is showing for our audience many of them are actually pretty small. So it's not about the size of the crystal. It's about the vibration. So yeah, definitely. And they'll all have the kind of the, the same structure and kind of resonance. So yeah, I mean, you know, most of these are kind of like two pound crystals. So, you know, relatively inexpensive. Um, yeah. And just everybody, you know, everybody can afford to use them basically. So that's the beauty of them. And I think why so many people use it really. And I know Grania McKenna Daniels, I've definitely, you're showing, you know, gem crystals. But in addition to this, I've also brought home, when I've gone on trips, for example, I brought home rocks <laughs> from specific yeah. <laughs> places, right? So, for example, years ago, I went to Findhorn, which is a community of healers in Scotland. And if you go to Findhorns, they have a rocky beach and there's, you know, millions of these rocks. So it's not like I'm, you know, stealing the national treasure. So <laughs> you, can <laughs> <definitely, now. laughs> yes, you can definitely bring rocks from specific brace places that hold the vibration of the place. Do you have any suggestions about how people can get rocks? <laughs> because many of us who love crystals love the rocks that we see all over the place in nature so yeah definitely I mean you know we're quite lucky we live down the road from Southwell Beach so you know beaches are wonderful places and and you'll see kind of um you know the um oh what are they called the kind of uh glass crystals and that's kind of like glass worn down over thousands of years and they're very beautiful and they kind of all have their own energy but 
beaches are wonder wonderful places and um even in the park sometimes my daughters pick up crystals so it, yeah it's lovely so i think yeah like i said it's just free in nature basically and you just kind of you know if you're drawn to it i think that's the kind of beauty but i think with anything you have to respect the energy as well and i think you almost if you're picking a leaf from a tree you have to ask permission so you know i kind of i know it sounds strange but you just need to ask if it's okay to take it um before you feel your pockets <laughs> right yeah that's like seashells on the beach right we can appreciate them but you have to ask yourself is that for us to take now with yeah. that let's take another break and listen to a message from our commercial sponsors I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. And we're listening to Grania McKenna-Daniels, homeopath and healers, about her work with crystal healing. So Grania McKenna Daniels, homeopath and healer. So many of us can spend decades studying about the various healing properties of crystals, because with any crystal, you can study the physical healing properties, how it affects mental, emotional, and how it affects spiritual. So we can learn about that. And someone who's a little bit jaded might say, oh, that's a placebo effect. But there's also pets who know nothing <laughs> about the, you know, the intellectual, mental, supposed values. Can crystals be used for pets? Yeah, definitely. I guess pets and children. Um, but yeah, pets are really receptive to crystal healing. So I had a friend that, you know, when she get a new crystal, the dog would either lick the crystal she liked or really wouldn't come near the crystal she disliked. So I thought that was wonderful. But um, I think animals are pretty clever beings and they will self-select crystals as well. So, you know, if you have a choice of two, they'll choose the crystal they resonate again with. Um, but yeah, you can get lovely things that will go on the collars or you can kind of make an elixir. So put... You know, you kind of want to put a bigger size crystal um, into the container just in case the water container, if you're worried about it, kind of consuming it. But um, again, like rose quartz is really good for, you know, when you kind of leave your dog at home and she kind of becomes sad or lonely. Um, so that's a good um, crystal for them. Um, carnelian. So that's good for a cat that's like quite shy and timid. It will give it a bit more confidence and kind of, yeah, hopefully it just doesn't curl up in a ball. It just wants to kind of. Uh, be with you a bit more um aventurine that's kind of green aventurine it's good for um pets if you're going say moving house or you're changing their routine or just for example you you're leaving them a bit longer than normal that's kind of good to give them a bit um, of reassurance and calm um blue lace agate that is good for cats that kind of kind of get stressed and kind of just kind of nervy cats so that's kind of a a tranquil kind of uh, crystal like the amethyst but uh, kind of good for that and it's good for communication but I guess you don't want the cat talking too much <laughs> um, uh, and then clear quartz is just good for maybe a dog that's a bit more aggressive and barks a lot so just kind of a calming energy again but um, you know great all-rounder really so kind of helps it you know if there's health concerns as well so again in, in the water bowl or in the area they sleep so so yeah, it's really good for pets. And, you know, I use kind of crystal healing when I worked with a sheep. Um, I used to use the dowser to kind of help. Obviously, you'd have to catch the sheep first. But um, yeah, it was really good. I kind of uh, used the rose quartz when they were uh, when I was separating them from their moms at weaning time and stuff like that. So yeah, really good for most animals, really. So would tell us more about that. So you used rose quartz with sheep? So how yeah, so um, so I put it in a bag in the water trough, uh, as well as homeopathic remedies, which is kind of yeah, just kind of give it, give the lambs a bit of support when you separate it from their moms, um, and likewise with the dowsers. So I kind of I used to put it over the sheep, and kind of would help me find areas that the um, sheep were sick, um, or kind of you know that needed more healing, um, and I'd use the Reiki symbol, but 
I remember one time working in a field and I had all the sheep rounded up and <clears throat> I couldn't get five sheep out of the trailer once I was finished. And I just couldn't understand. But I think they were the five lambs that I had given Reiki and healing to when they were younger. So they were actually loving the energy and they knew and they had experienced it before. So sheep, I know people say they're dumb, but they are pretty clever <laughs> and they do like healing. <laughs> so uh, amazing story. Now, um, Grania McKennett Daniels, most of us who use crystals in healing use the crystals in adjunct to other forms of natural healing. Uh, does crystal healing work well with other healing modalities? Yeah, definitely. The huge compliments to other forms. So sometimes when, you know, um, um, my client is on the healing uh, couch, I'll do Reiki as well. So that's just a beautiful kind of um, directing the symbols onto the area of the body that I'm drawn to. Um, there's homeopathic remedies now that are made from crystals. So, you know, any crystal you have, you can make it into that form. So it works slightly different because with homeopathy, you're kind of matching like for like. So you have to kind of match the remedy picture to the, the crystal. So it mightn't always kind of come up for that. But but yeah, that's a brilliant kind of um, addition to my work, basically. Um, and then also sound therapy. So kind of you've got the Tibetan bowls and you've got the Reiki drums, etc. So that's wonderful again when they're on the couch and just nice. Well, you don't want a drum when they're nice and relaxed, maybe at the end. Um, but then, yeah, the smoke as well. So like I said, I use uh, Palo Santo wood just to clear areas. So, for example, I was working on a, a lady that had issues around her womb. And even though the crystals were there, I could just feel this huge energy. Um, and then the Palo Santo just kind of energetically freed it up a bit more. And then I could kind of move my hands a bit freer over that. So, so yeah, they're just loads of things that can complement it, really. Yes, great example. So you can use a crystal healing in an energy grid whenever you're doing Reiki, for example. Or you can do like I do. I have crystals in my healing room right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and they just help to hold the space at a very high vibration. Now, I love that you talked about using crystal remedies. So one of the things we've had on our radio show here at the Natural Healing Show, we've had many shows where we talked about flower essences, which are natural healing remedies made from flowers, and they work on the mental, emotional, spiritual aspect. I also, in my healing room, have remedies made from crystals right so amethyst rose quartz or for example if someone was listening to this broadcast how could you make your own remedy from a crystal uh yeah so it's just uh, all about the intention as well so you kind of have get these lovely dropper bottles now or spray bottles but um yeah you can kind of get the tiny crystals like I said, size doesn't matter, but it's just tiny little crystals now you can kind of put into the, um, the uh, normally you kind of want them brown in color so they're more sensitive to light. So you don't want the beautiful energy destroyed. Uh, so you kind of want to put them in this where I would use um, filtered water or um, spring water. So it's not affected by chlorine and stuff in the water. Um, and then you kind of put your uh, crystal in there and set the intention. So you want to program that for a particular um, thing. So you put rose quartz for love essence, but also, you know, if you kind of want to protective spray, so kind of working with people's energy as a therapist or I mean, and all that, you absorb a lot of people's energy. So you want to clear the space between each client. So a good one would be um, obsidian or the black tourmaline. Yeah, and then just kind of fill it up. Um, you can preserve it sometimes with a tiny bit of alcohol, but that just depends how long you're going to use it for. And if you create a mother tincture, then you can fill other bottles um, with that dilution, basically. Great that's how I personally do it. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> yes, great information. So, Grania McKenna-Daniels, I know that you and I will select crystals for clients you know, based on where their imbalances are. So for our audience, shall you and I go through the different chakras and talk about um, crystals we might recommend for different chakras. So you brought up, for example, the smoky quartz. So smoky quartz strengthens your earth star chakra. So many of us 
these days are not very grounded. We're in our head, we're out of our body. So I'm gonna recommend smoky quartz for the grounding chakra, which and the earth star chakra is right below your feet. Any other crystals that you would recommend for the grounding chakra or star chakra? Yeah, I think just the black tourmaline as well. So kind of like more an earthy um, thing, but just kind of transmuting negative energy as well. But just, um, yeah, I kind of think the black tourmaline as well. I'm a fan of that. <laughs> yes. Now, first chakra, all right, which is at the root, our root chakra, having to do with issues of family survival, abundance, um, I'm going to recommend uh, a, a brown stones and red stones, such as ruby. What would you recommend for first chakra when you want to strengthen and or energize that first chakra? Yeah, I kind of think, um, uh, I think I'm trying to, I'm torn between the uh, carnelian and kind of um, more, more tiger eye but that's kind of like that is a beautiful essence but um yeah i think i'll go with well red it's more red actually because that's kind of like the color that goes with it really so i think more carnelian but that's kind of to me it's it kind of goes between the base and the circle just kind of that expression but yeah we'll go with that one carnelian yeah. <laughs> then we have the second chakra which is our sexual center and also our power center and um I have a beautiful lotus blossom sapphire, which is a pe peachy orange sapphire, which would be very helpful. And these are all our orange stones. So what would you recommend to strengthen the second chakra? Yeah, I think I'll go back on that one. I think, yeah, the kind of, you yeah, definitely just self-expression and kind of, I think with female as well, it's kind of like that empowerment and kind of connection with your sexual energy and kind of, um the wild woman inside you so yeah we'll go back to the carnelian again <laughs> yes now third chakra definitely citrine the yellow stones any other stones there that you would recommend for third chakra yeah i mean i guess sometimes yeah with the yellow calcite sometimes that kind of has the yellow essence as well but just um yeah, a bit more earthy, really. But yeah, yeah citrine, I just love, uh, just like I say, just a kind of vibrant, re-energizing. And you don't really have to cleanse them either. So it's naturally cleansing itself. So it's constantly on charge and yeah, has that sun energy as well. Now, heart chakra, these are going to be pink and green stones. Um, malachite, rose quartz, jade, pink tourmaline. These are some that I would recommend. What else, green tourmaline, what else would you recommend? Emerald for heart chakra. Yeah, I think the rose quartz, just kind of the resonance, like you say, pink or green is wonderful, but just the kind of, and about loving yourself really. I think a lot of people, you know, need self-love as well and just to trust and, and to value themselves. So yeah, that just resonates that one for me, for the heart. Yeah. Fifth chakra, I'm going to recommend blue sapphire. What would you recommend? Or um, kyanite. I know that when I'm writing books in the past, I've worn kyanite, which is a blue stone. So what do you recommend for fifth chakra? Yeah, so I guess the two really. So uh, the uh, blue lace agate, like I said, for communication. So um, just self-expression, find your voice, uh, you know, allowing things to come out, speak your mind um, and talk wise as well. Also, that's kind of a beautiful sort of color really on talk wise. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. Love that. Now six chakra, lapis lazuli, which is hard to find, <laughs> but definitely it's more of an indigo color. What do you recommend for six chakra? So yeah, that's, so that's the only one I don't have an example of, but um, that or amethyst, I guess you kind of go in the indigo sort of color there and just like calm and, and it, the amethyst is really good for your deepening your spiritual connection. So with the third eye, you're just <clears throat> developing that further. So yeah, amethyst is a good all rounder for that really. Yes, and labradorite as well has some blue, has some of that as well. Mm, it's beautiful. There. And then finally, uh, the seventh chakra what crystals do you recommend for seventh chakra or crown chakra yeah so they do kind of say the clear sort of quartz 
uh, would be a good one. I do like the clear, but I also like the um, the snow quartz crystal, which is just a whiter version of this, but that's kind of more feminine energy. So sometimes if this is the masculine, the, the rose quartz, or sorry, the snowy quartz is more feminine energy, but that's me. I'm just more um, on the feminine side of things. Um, but yeah, but clear quartz is a good uh, general all rounder for the for the intuition and and connecting with the higher self, really. Yeah, and again, angel or of quartz, Herkimer diamonds, diamonds, right, and also the purple stones such as amethyst. So, mm -hmm. Grania and McKenna Daniels, any final thoughts for our audience? Um, yeah, I think uh, crystals are just lovely for everybody, really. And they're kind of simple. They don't need, you know, you don't need to know a whole textbook about them. You're guided intuitively to them. Like I say, you can buy a lovely crystal for two pounds or you can buy a diamond, but, you know, it depends on what you want to spend, really. Um, and that energy will resonate with you and heal you on a kind of physical as well as mental and emotional level. So, you know, it will benefit you. And even if it's not immediate effect, you'll notice kind of a change over time. So, so, yeah, I think it's just wonderful. It's just, yeah, a nice natural, you know, it's taken them millions of years to kind of form this energy. And I just think tapping into that is is priceless, really. You've been listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. Our guest today has been the lovely Grania McKenna Daniels, homeopath and healer who integrates crystals with her Reiki work. And you can find out more about Grania McKenna Daniels and her wonderful work at her website, thehomeopathandhealer.co.uk. And remember that crystals are some of the simplest form of natural healing and they work by resonance. Thank you so much for healing and you can align to your highest vibration by choosing the right crystals for you. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.